Hello everyone, welcome back to BNG Productions. I'm your man Parker and today we are going to be taking a look at what the future has in store for Boston Bruins netminder Linus Allmark. So we'll hop right into it today, taking a look at the current state of the Boston Bruins as they head in to the 2024-2025 off season. So when we look at this team, in general, they're a very solid team with plenty of room to grow. But one of the big problems that they've had, we've seen it this year a little bit, we, and especially with the absence of guys like David Krejci, Patrice Bergeron, that top two center line role has seemed to be a little bit absent. We saw a guy like Charlie Coyle step up this year, same with Pavel Zaka, sort of filling that one-two spot, but not quite to the level that a team like the Boston Bruins are looking for. And as well, like always, when we look at it, you know, they're kind of a team that has a lot of depth, but just can't quite figure out how to really make that push. We'll see here what happens with Linus Allmark. He's the guy that we look at this team. Not a lot of assets to move, but Allmark's that one asset that really has a little bit of weight. You know, he's upcoming UFA, probably not going to re-sign, especially when you have Swayman in front of him. He's a player with a 15-team no-move clause now. It was a 16-1 last season, 15 this year. Has already sort of fought his way through a little bit didn't only played the one game in the playoffs this year not a lot i don't believe at least in store for him uh, this upcoming season they'll keep the tandem going but at the end of the day swayman's your guy in the playoffs it's gonna be interesting to see how they manage that but in general 21 ish million dollars in cap as of right now swayman still needs to be re-signed you still need that top two sort of center line role we'll see what free agency brings there of course zaka probably would go back to the center line you have a guy like dan and heinen jake debras whoever they might bring back if no trades were to happen with allmark but at the end of the day when you look at a team like the boston bruins they need to do something to really take that team to the next level and i think trading allmark gives you the package to do so and of course jesper volkvist on that fourth line the rfa I think is probably who you'll see on that fourth line, but nonetheless, time will tell there. So we'll flip over here now to the first mock trade. And I think when we look at a team like Edmonton, of course, we're not going to talk too badly about Edmonton here, considering they're in the Stanley Cup final. But at the same time, we look at a team like Edmonton, they're still lacking goaltending. Stuart Skinner has been, to put it nicely, shaky at best for the Oilers. And we've seen it time and time again. They're just one seem, seemingly one goaltender away from a big big shot and, and a really good team at the, for the Stanley Cup. But nonetheless, here, we look at a trade for a guy like Leon Dreisaitl. This is where it might get a little interesting. Modified no trade clause. So, of course, Dreisaitl does hold the power. But for the most part, players seem to like to go to Boston so you have that little bit of an edge as well we talked about it earlier with all marks modified no trade clause as well he might be a tough one to, to sort of choose Edmonton but at the same time you go to a team like Edmonton cup finalists this year starting goaltender role for all mark might be an interesting uh, tactic there to see if you can get him to agree sort of waive the no trade clause for a team like Edmonton that's one that I would be definitely interested in as well with dry settle you get him at a little bit of a discount eight and a half but at the same time he's a UFA upcoming so you might be able to squeeze a little bit of value there what else would go back Mason Lowry for one he's a player that I think kind of has to go back sort of the future of the Boston Bruins in terms of their defense of course you have McAvoy there you have Lindholm but at the end of the day for me you know Lowry is sort of that next big step for the Boston Bruins. You have McBoy on the right side, you have Lowry on the left. Those are the two players, in my view, who really are going to take the Bruins to that next level. But if you get a guy, a franchise player like Leon Dreisaitl, it might be worth moving a guy like Mason Lowry. Of course, still remains to be seen. I don't think Don Sweeney's going to be able to make this move just with the heartstrings attached, but definitely one to take note of. As well as Fabian Lysel. He's a player that, frankly, has underperformed. Not a lot of trade value in this one, but at the same time, might be that little extra piece to really get Edmonton to entice a little bit more. Of course, when you go to a team, you want to make sure you're not wasting their time, especially when it comes to a franchise player. Lysel might be that guy. This is what the lines would look like. So you'd have roughly 18 million. You'd have to find a new sort of second line left defenseman, but you would sort of find your entirety for it. And we think to that top six four group we were talking about, you know, that Coil, Marshawn, Geeky line, Probably is going to stay together. You might throw DeBrusque in there, depending on what his price tag is. You got Zaka, Drysaddle, Pasternak. Who knows? You might even, for the for the fun of it, might even throw in you know a, a guy like Dan and Heinen. He's another guy that hasn't quite found a home here. JV Ark probably could fill in that bottom four too. Might be an interesting one to see who they go with there. And then of course the two goaltenders with Bussy and Swayman. 
curious to see what goes on there. I really do like Bussy coming up. He's a guy that I think a lot of fans especially haven't quite given the time to looking at guys like Swayman and Allmark in front of him. Bussy's a guy, he's done his time in the AHL. We'll see if he's able to continue and really bring his success into the NHL level. Time will tell there. But, of course, the next one here is probably one of the more rumored and favored fan trades we've seen a lot of. And that's Marty Natchez for, from the Carolina Hurricanes. He is currently an RFA. I'm probably going to have a tough time signing in Carolina, just considering all the other players that they have to pay attention to. They have a lot of guys coming up on, on ending deals. So for Carolina, a lot of problems there. Might be interesting to see if they try and ship a guy out like Natchez. I think he's definitely a player that could go. I'll be curious to see there. The other player, aside from Ulmer, that I think could go is Georgie Merkulov. He's another guy, sort of under the radar type of player. But for the, for the Bruins, when we look at him, he's still a solid prospect. He's an up and comer. He's got the shot, he's got the ability to pass. He's played a little bit in the NHL, not too much to take note of, but at the end of the day, he's one of those players that I think really has the potential to take it to the next level. He's another player I'm really looking at to sort of take that next step and, and more or less kind of help. Carolina to accept this trade. There's a lot of bidders for, for, for a player like Natchez. So we'll be curious to see whether or not a team would like Carolina would bite. But at the end of the day, you look at what they need. They got Freddie Anderson and Nett, who's been an injury prone, injury prone guy, but you know, who knows, right? They might go out and, and really take a shot and say, okay, this is going to be our, our tandem goaltending for the series season. What are we going to do? Let's go get a, a, a top tier goaltender to lead us through the playoffs. So that way Anderson can still, still be healthy. You might even run a tandem in the playoffs. So that's one I'll definitely take note of. Uh, just that's the general trade. I don't think Boston wants to give up too much more and I don't think Carolina would accept anything less. So that's sort of your baseline for that trade. And now we pull over to the lines here and this is where it gets a little bit tough. We sort of talked about it a little bit. You know, where does nature fit? I think he's sort of that right winger still doesn't quite shore up that center role that we talked about but maybe it provides a little bit of help Zaka you know he played well this season we saw him especially good in the playoffs alongside guys like Pashnak and Heinen who knows maybe that line sticks together either they bring Heinen back you know there's been lots of articles out there about how much he's Heinen's valued at but at the end of the day you're looking at a guy who's sort of PTO last year Boston gave him a shot you might get a little bit of a hometown discount we'll be curious to see there of course Boakvist still RFA Swayman Bussy and Natchez all your RFA so that's five contracts they need to sign about 26 and a half million in cap space so it might be a tough sell there for the Bruins to really sort of get everyone into a solid value spot to really make their team cap compliant, but also being able to build that team for future years. I think guys like Patra, uh, Beecher are two guys that I think could make that jump eventually into the top two role, giving Zaka a little bit of, of relief. Coyle, I, I, you know, when you look at a guy like Charlie Coyle, he is the center role that you're looking for, but then the question becomes, are there better options to be on that top line, especially with Marshawn moving out at some point? Time remains to be seen there. Moving along here now to one of my favorite ones. As someone from Toronto, I know very well how angry Leaf fans are right now with two things. Number one, their star players, notably Mitch Marner. And number two, how bad their goaltending is. This trade makes probably some of the most sense for a team like the Leafs. And you might be saying, Mitch Marner to the Bruins, no way. But Remember, he has a no-move clause, meaning he has the final say on where he goes. If you're Marner's agent, you might just say, yeah, if you want to trade me, I'll, I'll give you one team. That's the Boston Bruins. So when we look at it, they want to make a big move. They need to get rid of one of their core players in order to be stay sort of cap compliant. This is one of the trades I'm really interested in to see if they can pull this one off. Allmark, Lowry, Lysel, very similar to the trade we talked about with the dry sidle move, but you're getting a franchise player in Mitch Marner as well. So in terms of value, I think it's fairly even. Obviously, when you have a player to Marner's standards, it's going to be a tough sell, especially when he has the no move clause, sort of that final say. But at the same time, we've talked about Allmark with, with Edmonton as well. You know, you get you get a hockey, hockey town, you get hockey sort of in, ingrained in the culture, but you also get a good team with a good shot at the cup. They're just missing one key part, part with the goaltending. And you also, you know, you get that 
that safety, that, that, that without the goaltending, that you know you're going to be the starting guy. Wall, as great as he's been in the playoffs and as great he's, as he's been in the regular season, he's hurt way too much to be considered the Leafs starter. So it's very difficult to sort of give the Leafs the, the goaltending edge there and to say Allmark wouldn't be enticed because there's no starting spot for him and the door is wide open and we look at it in that sense. We'll take now a look at the lines of what this would look like, very similar to the Natchez sort of line combos. We have Heinen on the left, is who I presume fill in. They probably likely wouldn't be able to bring back DeBrusque. Look at it, Swayman probably goes for about eight. Uh, Bussy, sort of AHL contract, that'll be another $1 million. High in probably two to three range. And at, at that point, you're sort of looking for that th that second line left defenseman. Would be tough to bring back to Brusque, especially where, where we're seeing his camp is sort of out there right now with the number. He'll t probably test free agency. And it wouldn't surprise me to see a team go after him, especially with the talent that he possesses. But nonetheless, that'll be an interesting one there. Now let's take a look at another trade. And this is one that I think sort of goes the other way other way where a team's really interested in a guy like Linus Allmark but he might not be interested this is the Ottawa Senators and this is one that once again Allmark has the final say on whether or not he'd want to go to Ottawa could be an interesting move there but Linus Allmark uh, in exchange for Jacob Shikrin 2024 first round pick and a 2024 fourth round pick which is 112 and 25 overall so when we look at this one it makes a lot of sense for the Bruins you know you shore up that defensive side Wotherspoon can kind of play as that seventh defenseman and then you don't have to worry about the defense core but what you can now focus on is the forward group go after a big name in free agency you know a guy like Stamkos is on the market am I saying to go after him you know maybe but at the end of the day Stamkos is a guy that wants to win and Boston does give him that opportunity especially with where this team is looking to go I think if they can shore that second line center roll up, you know, maybe there's a, there's a shot there. But at the end of the day, where this sort of puts you with the lines, 22 million, 16 to 20 contracts, that second line center is still free, is still doesn't have anyone in there. But where you sort of see it is in 22 million, you know, 8 million for Swayman, that gives you about 14 million. And then that's where you can sort of wiggle room, right? You give Stamkos, you know, 10, you give Stamkos 10 million, right? For a year or two years get, to give him that shot at one more cup you might entice them that way and then you sort of shore up that bottom six but the bottom six is pretty good so far so I wouldn't change it too much but it might be interesting to see sort of how they move there this Ottawa trade is one of my favorites but also this is another one sort of throwing it out there an LA Kings deal we saw it earlier in the trade deadline we sort of got nixed we don't really know what went on there lots of talk happened but what, what was going on but at the end of the day, Allmark and Frederick for Quinton Byfield. This is one that sort of addresses the future of the Boston Bruins. When you look at a team that needs to sort of make that next move, I think Frederick and Allmark combined gets Byfield, you know, Byfield 2020 first round draft pick. What are they going to do there? First round, you know, he's got the talent sort of playing behind a couple players in LA, sort of entices him on that side. He's an RFA coming up. So you got to deal with the contract, but also you free up a little bit of cap with Allmark going out, Frederick going out, might be an interesting move there. 28 million. We think about it. Swayman probably picks up 20. You get by field around four to five, probably a bridge deal one or two years. I don't think he's going to get a, a huge contract coming out. But then you also might be able to sign a guy like Jake DeBrusque, or you might be able to sign a guy like Danton Heinen. And that's where you sort of pick and, pick and choose your, your battles of how you want to address that center core. I think that's where you can really use Allmark well to sort of get that attraction especially with a team like LA who sort of just had problems finding their goaltending Talbot was in this year he was you know he was okay at best but at the end of the day I see a guy like uh, like Allmark he fits in really nicely in LA and, and the Kings have already shown interest at the trade deadline so I'll be curious to see what goes on there especially with the with the option to extend them as long as they want sort of in that dollar range might be an interesting move there and then the last one here is one of my favorite ones, I think. I think this is probably my favorite one. And this is one that's been rumored very, very heavily. This is Linus Allmark in exchange for the 2024 first round pick, 10th overall from the New Jersey Devils. And this is one of those trades, right? Where it's as much as it doesn't make a ton of sense, you know, you're sending the, the goaltender, a contending goaltender to the Devils who are sort of in the mix of everything. But at the same time, you're sending back the first round pick 
to a re, to a contending team. But really, when we look at it, we talked about it with Byfield. This is a team that's looking to not only win this year, but win in future years. And I think this is where this trade really works. You look at the two guys, in my opinion, that should go around number 10. Number one, that's Cole Iserman, And number two, Constas Hellenius. And these are two players I think would fit that top two sort of line center role really, really nicely. And We've seen Hellenius in all sorts of double IHF events, same thing with Iserman, and it just seems these two sort of stand head over heels across the entire board, and they've really impressed me. So it would not surprise me to see guys like Hellenius and Iserman step into that role, not this year probably, but in the next couple of years could really make a, make a deep impact on this, on this Bruins team. So flip over to the lines, and this is sort of the tough part about this trade, right? You don't see an immediate return. So for the Bruins who want us to contend this year, might be a tough sell, but at the same time, think about it in the future years. You're going to get sort of a top 10 pick, top 10 center pick, I might add as well. And it's going to be a tough one there to see what they're going to do. I, I think it's tough and if you're Sweeney to say, yes, we're going to, we're going to sell and we're going to take the first round draft pick and give up on the future. But at the same time, you're setting yourself up for future success. So in that sense, it's really good. But in the current moment, it might be a tough sell to the other GMs and to the other AGMs and whoever else is in your team, just to sort of convince them that, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And this is why, but it makes a ton of sense for the future of the Bruins, just a tough sell right now. And now we'll open it up to questions which you guys made plenty of in our Twitter on our Twitter feed. So be sure to follow us on Twitter at Black and Gold Pod. You can find it there as well. We'll take a look at the comments now. So better than we says Bruins trading up to grab Cole Eiserman at pick ten. A local talent committed to BU while using some Alinus Allmark's cap space for Chandler Stevenson. Smart moves all around. And this is one that I completely agree with. You know, you look at a player like Eiserman, homegrown talent. The only problem you might have, of course, is that another team would pick him. He's slotted in at 10, according to most boards. So if you're looking at 10, might be a tough one there. But there are plenty of good names up until about 12. You know, the first five picks, very, very solid. The next seven are sort of in that range. And then after that, it sort of falls off. So when we look at a team like the Bruins, what they're looking for is to get in that first 12 picks. And I think there's lots of good center options there. So even if it falls to 10, you'll have someone to choose from. And I think that's where the Bruins see themselves with that pick. Could be an interesting sell there. Next comment is from Dan Brunette 66 who says two New Jersey Devils for the 10th overall pick in this coming draft might sound like an overpayment on New Jersey's part, but it's not that deep of a draft past top five. That's what we were just saying. And obviously when we look at it, it's a tough, it's a tough sell, right? When you look at it for the Devils, you know, they're giving away a pretty important pick. You know, we look at it in the grand scheme of things, a top five overall, or a top 10 overall pick is never one that you want to give away. But at the same time, it might be worth it in the long scheme of things. Getting that goaltender that you've struggled with, we saw them pick up two new goaltenders at the deadline, didn't quite work out for them. They were hoping to make sort of that last minute playoff push, just couldn't, was, weren't really able to do so. But nonetheless, this is a team poised for success. They're just missing one key piece, and that is a goaltender. So I'll be curious to see if they do go hard at Allmark over these next few weeks before the NHL draft. Could be an interesting one there, especially at the draft. And this is one we don't talk about very much, but as soon as the, the Devils are on the clock, don't be surprised to see a, a trade to the Boston Bruins for a guy like Linus Allmark. It wouldn't surprise me there. The next one is from Annoyed Mets 523 who says, Linus to the Devils for Dawson Mercer in a second round pick so this was sort of the prompt of who would you like to see in the trade and this is another one we talked about the devils they're a team that really wants to contend so when we look at a guy like dawson mercer does it make a ton of sense he's a versatile player can play all sorts of lines for the forward group i'm not sure if he'd be that interested uh, in the devil's perspective to trade away one of their key assets for a goaltender especially when you have the draft capital to do it might be an interesting one here but then coach walsh 13 says how about this? Let's do a three-way trade. Merkulov and Allmark to New Jersey. The 10th overall in Dawson Mercer to Carolina and Natchez to Boston. And this is where, once again, we run into the same sort of problems with Dawson Mercer. He's a good player for New Jersey. I just don't really see it. Trying, it's, I know it's a big name for the Bruins to pick up, but I just don't really see it. Uh, but nonetheless, if you do have any thoughts on Allmark, where you might go, be sure to leave it in the comments here. But with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you'd like to subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on what the NHL Bruins to do with Linus Allmark. Until next time, see you.